version 1. Uh, so most of the time you will actually be uh, creating splines. Uh, as an example you can create uh, a spline from scratch but just by using a line. So let's create one here. There we go. And go back to the beginning to close it. Yes, I want to close that. Uh, let's get rid of that. Oops, we have to... Ah, okay, I've got geometry selected, so let's turn on all. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to select the spline because it's a type of uh, filter here. You can see I had it sec selected to geometry, and shapes are a different type, so we need to turn that to all to be able to select the, uh, the spline. Let's get rid of that. Uh, you can see you can create a circle, you can create an arc, which you just do that. There we go, we can create an arc. Uh, we can create a non uh, non gun an end gun I should say and uh, then you can choose how many sides it has afterwards there we go very useful tool uh, you can create text there's some text which uh, is a little bit bit large so we'll scale that and rotate it there we go uh, you can type in the text here there we go um, there's a spline, which you could use to do various things with. You could extrude that and make a model from it. Um, so there's some text. You can uh, create a section, um, which is used in um, other tools. Uh, you can create a rectangle, which is pretty basic. Uh, ellipse. Uh, donut, which is pretty useful. There we go. Uh, a star. Again, you can choose how many sides here. That's actually a pretty useful tool. Um, or you can create a helix. So we'll give it some height. Actually, let's do that again. There we go. And you can choose how many turns it has. So let's create a few more turns. There we go. So create a helix. So you've got some pretty good um, tools there for creating shapes. And uh, they're generally used uh, with other tools. Uh, to create uh, geometry from, uh, for instance, with, with uh, one of the compound objects is loft, uh, which allows you to use two splines to create a loft. Um, or you can create, uh, you can take a spline and just extrude it to make a, a, an interesting shape, or the walls of a house, things like that. So shapes are a pretty fundamental thing in Max, and uh, you'll be using them a lot um, whilst modeling. Okay, the next creation type is uh, lights. And you can see you have standard lights, um, and as of Mac 6, you also have photometric lights, uh, which again have been added for the architectural community, and uh, these basically simulate uh, real-world lights. And uh, if you go on the internet, you can uh, download uh, profiles, and uh, you can apply those to the lights, and you can basically simulate any lighting fixture that you can uh, get from pretty much any manufacturer in the world. Um, Though generally in Max you'll be using standard lights, uh, which come in a, a variety of different flavors. You have Omni lights, which is basically a single point in space uh, where light comes from. Uh, you've got a target spot, which um, allows you to create a, a spotlight with a target that it looks at. Um, you have a target direct, which is a, a direct light. In other words, a cast light, which is parallel. Um, whereas in a spotlight, it actually uh, goes off, it uh, diverges as it goes off from the center point. Uh, with a uh, target direct, it actually comes out in a parallel, uh, which makes target directs, sorry, tar uh, directs in general a very good lighting source for uh, sunlight and things like that. Uh, a spot would be useful for, you know, a spotlight or a headlight of a car. Um, an omni light would be useful, for instance, for a light bulb or something like that, where you've got light which uh, shines out in all directions. Um, then you have specific lights for mental ray, um, you've got a free spot, which is the same as a spotlight, but it hasn't got a target. Free direct, same thing, um, same as a direct, but it doesn't have a target. Skylight, which is a special uh, kind of domed uh, light, uh, which uh, is used for uh, global illumination type rendering, uh, which is something that uh, we won't come to in this DVD, but we, which uh, would be covered in uh, our, um, our lighting and rendering DVDs. And then you have a mental ray area spot, um, which again is specific to mental ray. So there you go. Using those options, you can create various lights uh, to light up your scenes. Then we have cameras, uh, which is actually quite a simple uh, group. Uh, there's not really much uh, you've, uh, options that you've got there. You've got standard cameras or standard cameras. Uh, 
But for instance, if you install a third-party render like Brazil, Brazil comes with its own uh, cameras, so you'd have a choice of standard cameras or Brazil cameras. So that, that does actually get used, uh, allows you to use plug-in cameras. And uh, there are only two types of camera as standard. There's a target camera and a free camera, uh, which is the same kind of concept as the uh, lights. So with a target camera, you've got a camera and you've got a target that it looks at. With a free camera, you just have a camera which doesn't have a target, which means you have to rotate it manually or link it to another object to actually make it look uh, in the right direction. So uh, they're each, they are actually both useful. Uh, free, free cameras are useful when you want to simulate uh, the viewpoint of a character, for instance. You can actually link uh, the, the free camera to its head and then uh, the camera will actually look wherever the character looks. So they both have their uses there. Then we have helpers and uh, the various types of helpers uh, they they're basically used as uh, construction objects in a scene uh, most helpers for instance will not actually render um, they're there in the scene uh, to hang objects off for instance you could link objects to a helper um, and then you could rotate the helper and then all the objects linked to it will rotate um, so let's just do that as an example we'll create um, uh, some teapots here there we are created a bunch of teapots, we'll go to helpers, we'll create a point here. There we go, there's a there's a point helper, which is just, as you can see, a little axis. Uh, we'll select all the teapots, and uh, we'll link all these teapots to this helper. There we go. So they're all children now of the helper, and then if we rotate the helper, you can see all the teapots rotate. So uh, helpers are actually very useful, and they're used very commonly. Um, especially when you're rigging characters, they're uh, they're used especially uh, in those sort of circumstances. Uh, you have other helpers like you have a grid, which allows you to, for instance, you can rotate the grid, and then uh, you can use uh, its axis as a, a translation space. So there we are. We've picked this grid, and now we're using that as the basis for translations of, let's say, another object like uh, if we create a box here. There we go. And we're going to rotate it, and you can see that the rotation is now based on the axis of the grid. So that's pretty, pretty weird. Um, same thing for translation. Uh, we'll pick that again. There we go. So now the translation's based on that grid. Um, we'll go back to view for that. Uh, there's a helper which allows you to measure distances. So we create a tape measure which measures from here to there shows you the distance in units so you can see or you can specify the length so there we go we can actually make it move in and out by changing the length by specifying it or you know if we move around the the end of the the, the tape measure it'll give us a constant update um, actually we have to select the base to do that which is a bit irritating but we can lock it on that and there we go we can see that uh, we have a little measure tool there, which is quite useful sometimes. Okay, I'll get rid of that. Um, underneath helpers, you also have atmospheric apparatus. They're used for various uh, volumetric rendering effects when you're rendering smoke or fog. Uh, you can limit the, the smoke and fog to a particular area and use atmospheric apparatus for that. You've got one which is um, shaped like a box or shaped like a sphere or shaped like a cylinder. Uh, so you have quite a few options there for um, atmospheric apparatus. Uh, you've got camera match, which is used for matching a camera that you may get from a client. Um, assembly heads, uh, these are actually, uh, you can actually create light fi fixtures, again, which is a, a feature which has been added for the architectural uh, customers out there. Uh, manipulators, which is something that we hit upon earlier. Um, let's create a slider here and turn on manipulator mode and you can see that we can now move that slide up and down and we can actually link that manipulator to a parameter of an object and uh, basically control that parameter uh, instead of say moving a spinner up and down here we can actually move the slider here on screen and that will actually update that parameter uh, which is useful for doing characters um, or you know parts of a car opening doors things like that quite a useful little rigging feature there we can select it and delete it and we've got different types of manipulators. Uh, we've got particle flow helpers, speed by icon and find target. They're basically features of the new particle system in Max called particle flow. 
and they're generally created automatically by particle flow when you uh, choose certain options in it so that you don't generally create those on the fly. Uh, 